One of the biggest stories from the past week has been Sean Snyder to USC. That's been reported now on both the USC side of things from the LA Times and the K-State side of things from the Manhattan Mercury. I actually think this makes a lot of sense, and it's jarring to see USC at first because Nebraska had been mentioned, Texas had been mentioned. Regionally, those are closer. You can see the connections there more logically. USC is sort of out of left field uh, and out there on the left coast, but I think it makes sense not just for Sean Snyder, also for USC and K-State. I think it makes a lot of sense from all three different angles. Now, there's some risk if you're going to be on Clay Helton's staff. Let's start with the USC part of this. Clay Helton, 8-5 and five last year at USC. A lot of people were surprised that he's coming back. Uh, USC fans do not like Clay Helton right now very much at all. So, yeah, it could be a one-and-done thing where Clay Helton gets fired after a year, depending on how things go. That is definitely true. All right, but USC definitely needs Sean Snyder. All right, so let's start with the Trojans there. Uh, USC special teams last year in uh, kick coverage, worst in college football, 130 out of 130 for USC. Not good. Uh, their punt return was 11th in the Pac-12. Every other return unit or coverage unit was ranked in the bottom half of the Pac-12. So things were not good there. It's obvious why USC fires their special teams coordinator. Sean Snyder makes a lot of sense. If you go look at the list of who's been good in special teams of the last 5, 10, 15, 20, whatever years in college football, you're going to see K-State every time near the top of that list. If you're a football nerd, football outsiders, says K-State from 2014 to 2017, a top 25 unit in special teams in all of college football every year, including number one in 2017. And Sean has that Snyder name. Snyder and special teams are pretty much synonymous. So, of course, if you're USC, I think that's a pretty easy sell to get people excited about, hey, of course we're focused on special teams now. We went out and got Sean Snyder. That's the best that you can do. So I think deservedly so. Uh, Sean Snyder's reputation precedes him as far as that is concerned. Now, as far as why this and not Nebraska or Texas for Sean Snyder, what well, sounds like USC is way more interested here. And that's evidenced by the fact that this is an actual full-time coaching role. This is not an analyst, which is what it was reported to be at Nebraska. And I think from hearing a little bit from the Nebraska side of things there, Scott Frost may not have been as fired up about it as Clay Helton is to get that special teams in uh, help in at USC right now. So I think you go a place where you're wanted, you go a place where you get a chance to be a, a full-time assistant coach. Because if you're Sean Snyder, you could have done the analyst role thing for another year and get paid two hundred grand and not have to move and be here in Manhattan. So if you're going to Nebraska, eh, kind of the same thing, but with a different staff and all of that, you're going to have to uproot your life. Well, now if you're going to uproot your life and go all the way out to L.A. and deal with the traffic, at least, hey, it's a full-time assistant coaching gig. I would imagine it's going to be more money, more than the two hundred grand that K-State would have owed Sean Snyder. So, hey, I see why you go and take that risk. And the upside's pretty high there for Sean Snyder. If you do make USC special teams a lot better and it helps Clay Helton stick around and keep his job, man, that's a high-profile job. You're going to get some attention there. So if Sean Snyder wants to take this into the next step of his coaching career and he wants to be somebody that's going to pursue other assistant coaching opportunities and try and work his way up the ladder, the the upside is definitely there at USC. So I, I see that. I see why that why that makes sense. Now, uh, for Sean, like why, why now? I think the other question I've seen people ask is why – make this now the time that you're going to make that jump. Why not 15 years ago? Well, I think circumstances change, man. Obviously, his dad's not the coach here anymore. It's not the same family thing he had been used to. And it's kind of like, I've likened it to this, like, understand, put yourself in Sean Snyder's shoes. You had the family business up and humming for a long time, a ton of success, more success by far than anybody has ever seen here. And the family business gets bought out. Now there are new guys in charge. The new guys are having success, they're doing it a totally different way. And while you, yes, were included on the staff, you're, you're sort of an outsider because you're just not one of those guys that was hired by Chris Kleiman. I can totally understand how that would reignite your fire to want to go try and prove yourself in a different ground, right? Now, you're old news here in Manhattan, but you can still go prove that you're a great football coach. That, I can see how it would really light the fire under Sean Snyder after seeing a new coaching staff come in and have success and realize that K-State football is moving on uh, without the Snyder family right now. So, hey, I'm with it, man. I think Sean Snyder still is a terrific special teams coach. He has the opportunity uh, to go prove himself here, and I say he should absolutely go do this. And then from K-State's standpoint, makes a lot of sense, too. If Sean Snyder were to go take one of those analyst jobs, okay, now you're still potentially on the hook for some money. I don't know the particulars exactly of how that contract situation worked out. For instance, Andre Coleman, K 
K-State will still owe the difference between $490,000 and whatever his salary is going to be this year at Texas because of the language in his contract that he signed back in 2017. I don't know 100% if it would have been the same for Sean, but what I do know is now that he is taking a full-time assistant coaching role K-State will not owe any of that two hundred grand. It's coming off the books, and assuming this does go through for Sean Snyder, K-State does not owe that money. So it's it's just a much cleaner break for K-State here, right? Because you won't – I don't know what the language in the contracts was. Everybody I tried to talk to seemed to be not 100% sure when the Nebraska thing came up. I do know, and this is through K-State. I know K-State now will not owe Sean Snyder the two hundred grand or any money if, indeed, it does go through and become official that he takes this job at USC. So – For Sean Snyder, it's a chance to go prove yourself when the family business is now being run by somebody else and there's plenty of success there. The fire strikes back up again. You want to go be an assistant coach somewhere. You have high upside at USC, even though it is a somewhat risky situation. And hey, there was already a market for Sean Snyder anyway. I think if he goes to USC and Clay Helton still gets fired in a year, Sean Snyder can still go find another job. I think that's fine. He gets a chance to be a full-time assistant coach and go somewhere where he's really wanted because USC desperately needs the special team's help. And if you're K-State, financially, this should help out. So I like the move. I wish Sean Snyder sincerely uh, the best of luck in going and doing this. And I think he will be successful at USC, and I'm excited to see it. Uh, guys, please click subscribe. Continue to subscribe here to the channel. I promise you I'm going to be get you getting you more consistent uh, content here throughout the weeks. And uh, stick with it. Comment, uh, subscribe, whatever it is that you need to do, man. Pound the like button here on this video, and let's get this thing rolling. Thanks.